Do you practice fasting yourself? Do you? Yes, of course, I practice, I practice fasting. I, um, I don't uh, normally eat lunch, uh, but I also I just wrote a, uh, finished a book, um, which was published in Italy, and it's going to follow uh, here in, uh, in the U.S. And in it, I, I talk about the, um, the need to use this in, in a flexible way, right? And, and this is going to have to be the future of nutrition. And I think nutritionists and dietitians and doctors are going to have to get used to this. Um, so, the, for example, I say, if you're overweight or obese, or you tend to gain weight, then you have to go to this two meal a day program, like breakfast and lunch or breakfast and dinner, okay? As I did for, for 15 years. Uh, then if you underweight, though, you can't do that anymore. So you have to go back to three meals a day, right? So you, you have to use fasting and time restricted feeding mm -hmm. and such in Panda's work, which I also utilize uh, for that purpose, you know? And, and so keep the, the feeding to 12 hours or less and then decide the meal frequency and Sachin and I just wrote a, an article on this and uh, uh, to, to uh, control the weight. It's really important, particularly control you know, visceral control fat. fat. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we hope that that's what doctors start doing and say, instead of uh, give simple solution because uh, two meals a day may not be easy to follow, but it's a clear rule, right? And that's what people need. You, you can say, I, I go for it or I don't, but if I do go for it, it's gonna work, right? Mm -hmm. uh, whereas now we have a system where it's almost impossible for anybody to regulate when you tell somebody eat five or six times a day, it's almost impossible to uh, uh, regulate what somebody eats, right? Um, by by bring, making it two meals a day, um, then you have much higher control, and uh, and that can serve to in time restriction and two meals a day, they can serve to uh, um, you know uh, regulate the amount of calories as such and as shown for the time restriction, um, and uh, so now we you know we need to do more studies on, on meal frequency, but. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, this is likely to get the same uh, similar effects. Do you think it's more important? So, within if you're eating within this 12-hour window, which is coordinated with the circadian rhythm, then and if you're eating two meals, do you think it, that you would get more benefits if you had the two meals closer together? Because then you, in theory, would be fasting for longer. You'd have, you know, more beta hydroxybutyrate, ketone bodies, things that are, you know, you know, being produced upon a prolonged fasting or or do you think uh, it I would say I would say you know I spent you know 20, almost 25 years uh, since the Walford days, um, and I would say I learned one thing, and also being Italian and spending a lot of time around the world, I learned that you cannot take happiness away from people, you know. So I always stayed away from trying to, to regulate too much, mm -hmm. you know, too close, mm -hmm. uh, two hours apart, you know, what do you gotta eat, you know? so. I think we, we always start with, how can we keep you as close as possible to what makes you happy uh, while optimizing uh, the, the longevity aspect? Um, so I never started doing that because I know that people are not gonna do it, just like calorie restriction. Calorie restriction has been around for 100 years and nobody does it, right? I mean, maybe one in a thousand. If we're, I'd be surprised if it's even that, right? Yeah. Maybe one in 10,000, right? So after 100 years of calorie restriction research, one in 10,000 Americans maybe are doing calorie restriction. Um, so, so I think that it's important, you know, for example, with the two meals a day, there's a lot of people that have done that on their own, right? There's a lot of centenarians. If you go to Loma Linda or you go to Okinawa or you go to Southern Italy, a lot of people say, yeah, I eat twice a day. That's okay. And so, so that told me that from the beginning that there was something that, that was doable and people even doing it uh, in a voluntary, voluntary way. Um, and, and anything else, to start regulating all you should eat uh, for, and also 12 hours, I, I think a lot of people did that kind of time restriction, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that's when I grew up, that's how we did it. You know, you ate, maybe you had breakfast at 8 a.m. and then 8, 8.30 at the most, you finished, you know, and that was it. And um, so, yeah, so I think that, that that's important to, to uh, not try to push for every inch of the longevity plan and, and really, because people will abandon it. That's another thing we sure up, you know. If you tell them to do things that, that are very much 
uh, you know, not in tune with what they're used to, they'll do it for six months and then, and then they'll never do it again. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this is why the, um, the uh, skipping meals, because a lot of people do it, and when they, you switch to it, that's just an easy thing to do, and you can do it all the rest of your life. And then the periodic uh, fasting mimicking diets, because also it's not very invasive, and people say, yeah, you know, every three or four months, I'll, I'll, I'll give you five days like that. You know, make it simple for me. Don't make me, you know, don't make it too low calorie. Make me eat, but I can do it. So I think it's, uh, if we want the masses to do it, it has to be the technology and the safety, et cetera, et cetera, has to match their needs. Um, and I think that, that that's where the effort should be put in, you know, uh, rather than trying to, to, you know, regulate everything, you know, how right. people do everything. Right. And, yeah, and, com compliance is very important. Um.